Hi, welcome to DevNet Create. We're going to talk about level up your DevOps with GitHub Actions and Kubernetes. I'm Rob Richardson. Let's dive in. Here's the part I tell you, where I tell you I'm definitely going to post the slides on my site tonight. But in this talk, there are no slides. The code is online right now. Let's head off to GitHub and take a look at it. Here's the code up on GitHub. Well, actually, this GitHub repository is empty. So let's go build the code. You can get to this GitHub repository by going to robrich.org, click on presentations. Here it is up at the top, level up your DevOps. The GitHub repository is right there. While you're here on robrich.org, click on about me and you can see some of the things that I've done recently. I'm a Cyril developer advocate, a Microsoft MVP, a Docker captain, and a friend of Redgate. AZ Give Camp is really cool. AZ Give Camp brings volunteer developers together with charities to build free software. We start Friday after work. Sunday afternoon, we deliver the completed software to the charities. Sleep is optional, caffeine provided. If you're in Phoenix, come join us for the next AZ Give Camp. Or if you'd like a Give Camp near you, hit me up on email or on Twitter, and let's get a Give Camp in your neighborhood too. Some of the other things that I've done, I do a lot of Docker and Kubernetes training and consulting. And I replied to a .NET Rocks podcast episode. They read my comment on the air. And they sent me a mug. Woohoo! So there's my claim to fame, my coveted .NET Rocks mug. So let's dig in. We need to build a website. We need to containerize it and host it in Kubernetes. Let's do that. First step, let's do a .NET new. Now .NET new allows us to scaffold out a website in a really elegant way. So let's say .NET new MVC. I'm going to give it a name of level up. Dev ops, and I will do the output folder right here. Now, if I didn't use the name, it would put it in, uh, it would use my folder as the name. And if I didn't specify the output, it would create a subfolder for that. So now we have our content here inside this directory. And if we open this up in VS Code, we can see we now have a website. We have a home controller. We have some views. So here's the home view. And let's say instead of just welcome, welcome devnet create. And now we've got a website. OK, we want to get this into Git. So let's create a new file, a .git ignore. Now, this is all the content that we don't want in our Git repository. So all the built content like bin and obj, and all the user-specific content like star.user, and star.suo and the .vs folder. Thanks, VS Code. Yes, I would like to include this new folder. Here's this .vs code folder. And uh, yeah, that's user-specific details about how I might choose to debug my app. But in this case, I'll commit that. Now, you may choose to exclude that, and that's fine too. OK, so we've got our website. We've got our .git ignore file. Let's talk about how we get it into containers. Our first stop is to create a .docker ignore file. New file, .docker ignore. And here in a .docker ignore file, we'll specify all the things that we don't want to end up in our container. Now, it's the exact same syntax as our git ignore file. So let's put that content into place. And we'll also exclude the content that is development centric, like app settings.development.json. And here in properties, the launch settings json. Now, that is all of the details that we need to launch our website in debugging, and we don't want that in a production container. Now, the cool part is if we don't have a .docker ignore, but we do have a .git ignore, Docker will use that instead. Next up, let's create a new file, and this is a Docker file. Now, if you accidentally named it dockerfile.txt, easy enough, we can rename it and pull off the .txt. In this case, I have the Docker plugin inside of VS Code, and so I can see the icon change to a whale. Perfect. Now, inside of a Docker file, we will have from copy, ah, copy, run, and CMD. And these are the main commands in our Docker file. We will have more, but if you understand how these four commands work, you can probably read most Docker files. First off, from. Now, we want to stand on the shoulders of giants. So let's head off to Docker Hub. We will search for .NET. And we will land here in this repository that is the .NET repository up on Docker Hub. 
Now, this is a meta repository and lists all kinds of other repositories. If you want to see a bunch of Docker files, samples can be really great. Runtime depths is what we need to be able to install .NET. Runtime allo allows us to run console apps. On top of that is ASP.NET, which allows us to ho host websites. And SDK is on top of that that has our build tools. Now, we want to build inside of our container. So let's pop this one open. And let's grab this label right here. Now, scrolling down a little bit, we can see that by default, 5.0 is built on top of Debian, but there also is an Alpine version. So let's use 5.0-Alpine. Back here in our Docker file, from this-Alpine. OK, now we need to copy all of our content from the current directory, where we'll run our Docker build command, to the current directory inside of our container. Where is that directory? Workdir slash src. Now, I could have named it anything, but src works in this case. So we've copied all of our content from this directory into our image that we're building. And now we need to run some commands. Now, if we we're building a build script, we would say .NET restore to restore all of our NuGet packages, all of our libraries. .NET build will build in release mode. .NET test to run all of our unit tests. Let's also do this in release mode so that we don't accidentally get a release and a debug build. And .NET publish, publish, we'll build in release mode here, and we'll send this content out to the dist folder. Now, this is not that unlike right-click publish from Visual Studio, but we're doing it here inside of a build file so that we know we'll get consistent results every time. Now, these are the commands that we'll need to run from the console, and so we need to run them as Docker commands. So let's run this one, run this one, run this one, run this one. We could run other commands as well, but that'll get our content from source code into a website that is running here in the dist folder. So let's run it. .NET and level up devops.dll. And it is in the dist folder. Now, we do need a few environment variables. Let's go grab those that will just set the rest of the content in place. We're telling it to run in production mode and to run on port 80. Now, this Docker file would work great. We could run this right now. But there are some things that we can tidy up. Right now, we have our build tools and our source code inside of our production container. Let's do it a little bit differently. Let's say from. And we can come back to Docker Hub to find the new container. But in this case, I know it is ASP.NET. And we'll now create a second image with only the content that we want in it. Now, let's move to the app folder. And we want to copy our content from the dist folder into this current folder. Right now, it's going to copy it from the root over here. We want to copy from equals build. Well, where is the build stage? Let's call this one as build. We've now created a multi-stage build. Here is our build server container. And here is our production runtime server container. Now, I put this in air quotes because they aren't servers. They're images that we're building. But we've now split our build in half. We've used a multi-stage build. Now, this is great. Each of these Docker layers will be able to create a new layer. And so we couldn't just say run rm minus rf slash src. That wouldn't make our image smaller. Instead, by creating a multi-stage build, we now have the ability to separate those two pieces. This will only include built assets. The other thing is each of these Docker layers can be cached. So right now, I'm restoring my NuGet packages, but I'm copying in all the files beforehand. So what if I change a small JavaScript file or a CSS file? It's going to invalidate this layer and then re-restore all of my NuGet packages. Really, I want to run this first and then copy in all my content. Now, I still need to tell it what the manifest is. So let's copy level up devops.csproj into the current folder. And now I know the libraries I need to restore. I will restore them. And then I will copy everything else in and build it. Now, if I change a JavaScript file, I'll invalidate this layer, so I won't need to re-restore my NuGet packages. Perfect. So now we have a Docker file that will work great in getting our source code into our container. Next step, let's create a Kubernetes YAML file. 
Now, of course, the <laughs> Kubernetes YAML file gets confusing. So let's just copy the content that we used last time and put it in place here. Yep, all the content from where I did it last time will work perfectly here. Let's just change last time to level up DevOps and we've got our content in place. Now this includes a deployment that has one replica. Here's our pod definition. It includes a service that will load balance across all of the one instances and an ingress that will resolve DNS and point it at the service. Now we do have some variables here. Here's our image label, here's our uh, registry URL, and we'll use the build to be able to replace these in place so that we don't need to commit our secrets into source control. But now we're ready. Let's start committing it. Oh, let's create one more file, a readme.md, and let's put some readme content into place. Uh, here's the readme content, and now we've got our stuff in place. So let's commit all of this content. I will stage all of these changes, double checking that I didn't um, include anything that I built. I can open up each one and see what changed. In this case, all of the files are new. So <laughs> everything changed. Initial commit. We'll commit this. And now let's push this up to GitHub. Git push origin main. Now we started out with an empty GitHub repository. And now that we just pushed, we have some content here inside GitHub. Now it was mostly an empty repository. I did do a few things beforehand here. I went into secrets and I created some secrets that we can use in our build. ACR password, ACR URL username, the things that we'll need to log into our container registry and our AKS URL and kube config, the things that we'll need to log into Kubernetes. Now that's perfect. Next up, let's go in and look at some build actions. Now it suggested that a simple workflow might be a good choice, but we can also look for other things, Terraform, Ruby, Python, and we can grab a whole lot of things based on our needs. Now, in this case, I'm building a Python thing. So not a Python, a Docker container. So let's look for a Docker one. Uh, there it is. Set up this workflow. We could also start from a blank one as well. So I'm going to say change this to docker kubernetes.yaml. And let's build up this build process. So let's say docker build and push Kubernetes apply. Now we want to do this on the main branch, but let's come back to pull requests. We'll do that separately. Now, what are the steps? Well, we'll check out our thing, and then we want to do a Docker build and push kubectl apply. In this case, we're gonna run a multi-stage command so let's docker build. We know what that build file is. And let's put the dot at the end. And let's name this instead of my image name, level up dev ops. OK, now we want to be able to use our secrets. For example, we want to be able to label this to match our registry. How do we use these secrets? Well, we've created our secrets correctly here. And so now we can use them with this uh, dollar curly curly to be able to get at that content. OK. So I want to say dollar curly curly secrets.acr uh, URL level up DevOps. And I'm also going to replace this with the github.sha, which is the git hash for this commit. Now that we've tagged it with this URL or with this image name, then we can say Docker push that image and it'll go up to our registry. Well, kind of. We need to log into our registry first. So let's come in here and we can search for um, Docker login. And here's a good one. We can take a look at the full marketplace listing that will give us all the particulars of how this action works. We can probably get from here to the GitHub registry. But in this case, the content that we're after is this um, YAML. And we will set that in place right here. Let's indent it correctly. There we go. Now, with this Docker login, 
we need to pass it a registry. So good thing we have a secrets for that, secrets.acr URL. And we also need a username. Good thing we have a secret for that. Let's go set this to our ACR username. We need a password. Good thing we have a secret for that. Let's go set in ACR password and log out. Now, if we're running on shared hosting, logging out might be important because we don't want our secrets to leak into the next build. In this case, GitHub is going to destroy our build agent the moment that we finish, but setting this to log out true is not a bad thing. Let's leave that in place. Cool. Now that we are logged into Docker, we can push our container up to the registry. The next thing we need to do is kubectl apply fk8s.yaml, and that will be able to push our content into Kubernetes. Well, which Kubernetes? Let's come back here into the uh, marketplace and let's look for a kubectl or a Kubernetes set context. Okay, Kubernetes set context. Is that one going to get us the one we want? Yep. Let's go grab the YAML here, set that in place. We will need to fix the indenting there. And now that will set our context. Now we have very various methods of how to be able to log in. In this case, yes, let's use the cube config method. That sounds perfect. And so now we need to pass in our cube config. Well, nope. We have a secret for that, secrets.kubeconfig. And because we use the cube config, we don't need to set the rest of these. OK, now we're logged into Kubernetes. So now when we do a kubectl apply, it will work just fine. Now, there are a bunch of secrets that we need to set in place. And so let's go grab a sed command that will be able to get this um, these secrets in place. Now, I'm doing this sed command into the kds.yaml file. And I'm not creating a backup. I'm replacing ACR URL with the secret, AKS URL with the secret, and the image label with the GitHub SHA. Now, I'm very specifically doing this after I push this to the registry. If, for example, I did this up here, and if, for example, we came here to our, uh, Git, our Docker ignore file and we forgot to include kds.yaml in there, then these secrets would end up inside of our container. We definitely don't want that. So I'm going to very specifically put this after I've pushed this to my registry to ensure that those secrets don't end up inside the container. OK, so we've got this uh, Kubernetes build file in actions build file, create build file, and let's commit it. Now, the cool part here is that this is just one of the files in our project. It's in a .github slash workflows folder. But if we want to get back to that editor, we can come in here and we can click Edit, and it will do the things to be able to get at our file. But in this case, because it's just a file, we can come in here and we can say git pull. And we can also introduce uh, interact with this just from our VS Code instance. That's perfect. Now, because we have a file inside .git, github slash workflows, then it also kicked off a build. So let's come back here, and we can see the dot showing us our build is running. Let's go into the details, and that will do all of the steps. It will log into Docker. It will log into Kubernetes. And then it will launch into our Docker file to do all of the uh, restore our NuGet, run our build, run our unit tests, publish that content, copy that content into a new container, and then publish that container to our Docker registry. From there, it will start that content inside of Kubernetes. And we can see that it looks like our build is green. Very nice. Now, it will take a while for the DNS to propagate. So let's use Kubernetes port forwarding to be able to get at this content right away. We could port forward into a particular pod or into a deployment. In this case, let's port forward into a service. So kubectl. Uh, port forward service slash level up dev ops port 80 on my local machine to port 80 inside the service. But if I have something else running on port 80 on my local machine, let's forward port 8080 instead. 
uh, kubectl port forward. Did I spell that um, incorrectly? Let me double check. Ooh, kubectl get all. Let's see, did I name it incorrectly? There we go. I I named it level up dev op instead of dev ops. kubectl port forward that to 8080 to port 80. Oh, well, yep, it's got an error image pull. Let's go fix that. Um, it is not level up dev op, but rather level up dev ops. And let's commit this change. Now we do have uh, two changes. We have the change here, and we also have the change in our uh, dot docker ignore file, uh, adding this Kubernetes YAML file. So let's get that staged as well. Ah, save. Oh, <laughs> helps if I uh, find and replace correctly. There we go. Fix typo. Git push origin main, and that will click kick off our new build correctly. Now the cool part is that uh, we can watch this build do each of those steps, and uh, that is really fun. For the sake of time, we'll fast forward past this part, but it's really cool to be able to watch it do each of the steps in our build file. So let's come back to pull requests. Well, one of the things that we wanted to do was create a pull request build. Now this is just a file in my um, in my repository. So let's copy this and we'll paste it. And let's call this one Docker PR. Now in this case, Docker build for PRs. We want to be able to run it on well, not main, but we also want to run on pull request. So branches, let's do it on all branches. Now, what are the steps that we need to do? Well, we probably don't want to send it to our production Kubernetes cluster. Let's delete that step. Because we're not sending it to our Kubernetes cluster, we don't need to set the secrets in place. We also don't need to log into our Kubernetes cluster. We probably don't want to push this to our container registry even. We don't want to accidentally run this pull request which means we don't need to log into our Docker registry. To that end, let's not even tag it with our Docker registry. Let's just call it dash PR. Now we're still gonna do all of the steps inside of our Docker file. We just won't do all of the subsequent steps of deploying it. Okay, so let's come here into our thing and we can stage that change. But wouldn't it also be nice to have a, um, a status bar here in our readme? Let's come back into actions and we'll pick our particular build and we'll come in here and we'll say create status badge. Copy this markdown. Let's set that in place in our readme file. And let's say right there. And let's also stage this change. So let's add um, status badge and PR workflow. We'll commit that. And we will push it, git push origin main. And we have created a change inside of our main branch so we can watch that build go. It'll be really cool. Now, last time we went in based on um, clicking this dot. This time, let's go in through actions. We can see our various uh, builds ready to go. And if we filter by a build, we can see that here's the builds going here, and there have been no PR so far. So let's open up this build and see what tasks it's doing. It's doing all of those tasks. So we did the Docker login, the Kubernetes set context, and it looks like we just finished um, doing our .NET restore. So all of our packages are now in place. Let's do the build. Oh, yep, our build succeeded. That's great. Let's run all of our tests, no failing tests. 
Let's publish that content into the disk folder. Copy that disk folder into the new container. This is working great. Push that container up to our Docker registry. The Docker registry looks like it got populated. And let's apply this new version then into our Kubernetes cluster. Ooh, that worked great. Let's do that port forward again. Um, kubectl port forward, level up DevOps. And now let's come to localhost 8080 and we'll view our website. We started with nothing and we got to a running website inside of a container using GitHub Actions and containers. That was really fun. So if you wanna grab this code, it's available up on GitHub right now. You can also grab this code by going to robrich.org, click on presentations at the top and jump into level up DevOps with GitHub Actions and Kubernetes. If you wanna hit me up on Twitter for questions or thoughts, hit me up at rob underscore rich. And I'll also join you in that spot where the conference is designated for Q&A. Thanks for joining us for Level Up DevOps.